And a small scale research study that, as we said, was carried out in Greece and in Italy. Similar context in terms of language and learners' age, uh, school level, and the engagement of both <coughs> teachers and learners and students. And it was an engagement not in terms of what the teachers were offering, but uh, the teacher had to cope with the contributions of the learners, something that they very rarely do. So what does this small scale research communicate to us? Well, to teacher trainers and to teachers, because here there are lots of teachers, but also many teacher trainers or teacher educators. Well, teacher trainers, teacher education courses should involve teachers in an effort to approach. Uh, teachers can write, erase students' awareness of the global nature of English, can further develop our comprehension and spoken interaction of words. Because as I said before, very little is being done in terms of awareness of spoken language. I mean, you can't teach, develop listening skills if you don't do at the same time connect it with spoken language features. It's inevitable, it's unavoidable. But very seldom this is done in the books, very seldom is done in the courses. So this is something that opens up. It is beyond the elf of learners. It's something that has always been lacking in a way. And uh, this is something that we should sort of aim at. So the message is also to publishers. Pan is ready for widening borders of EFT materials, exploring findings from elf research, resorting to authentic audiovisual materials and appropriate tasks, gradually catering for learners' needs real needs. Uh, I'm very surprised to find out that publishers very seldom in, in, in interview students. They interview teachers. They have focus groups with teachers. Very seldom they interview students. And redefining teaching and evaluation constructs. Also the whole issue of evaluation. And the find is ready for a new construct also for evaluation. Having said that, so we wanted to have with you hands-on activities. We would like to invite all of you to working groups of four people. Can you make it maybe uh, one, two, three, four? Four, you're already there. You're already there. Three people in time. Uh, it's not up. You need to stay, look around, and make it here for four. I counted 82 people in the, in the group, so in four or less.
change, how you would change its activity and why. The rationale is very important given what we've been talking about since this morning. So time starts now, pre-season.
Commander Riker. What they thought their modification of the activity is. So don't speak too loud. Maybe introduce each other so that everybody knows each other. And then you got five minutes to report. You might find that you came out with the same ideas or very different ideas. So pressure them because they can be discussed. Okay. All number ones here. Okay? All number one, quickly, quickly, we haven't got much time. Number twos, over there. You see the pink piece of paper, this is the yellow one. All number twos. All number twos over there, thank you, same task. All number threes over there. All number threes over there. Report to each other how you modify the activity. All number fours up there. Up there. Up there. All number fours. There is a blue piece of paper with written four. At this point, we've got four groups. In each group, the different components of the original group, so you will have to report. Someone can start, and if you found that they did something very similar to you, you say, okay, we also said did that. If you find that you did something very interesting, you add and you share. Is the task clear? We'll come around, but you've got five minutes. Five minutes can be very long, do your task one after the other. Okay? Start now. Where <laughs> 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 
rises in English don't stop with Britain or America, of course. There are many countries where it's the first language and accompanied by different accents. Often the difference is in the vowel sounds. This is a speaker of Australian origin. Hi, what's your name? My name's Natalia. Okay. Natalia, where are you from? I'm from Brisbane, Australia. How long have you been living in London for? About a year and a half now. One of the good things about London is a lot to do. English is also an international language and is considered a lingua franca because it's used by non-native speakers to communicate. Okay. There are many different variations of pronunciation by... I apologize. Uh, there was something that went wrong in the numbers I had originally found. So what I suggest, you saw some extracts from the interviews. And you had already seen them when I presented the first activity. So what I suggest is, could you please look at the questions that they are posed in the activity that they had developed and see whether you would change them in some way or another. Because the questions are very clearly oriented in order to, I won't tell you. So in your group, look at the questions and see how you would change or modify the activity. While you discuss there, I'll try to find the original one, okay? I'm sorry for the delay. More than half the population in London are from a non-white background. Some parts of London have strong concentrations of ethnic groups. For example, Brick Lane is in the center of a large UK Bangladeshi community of around 500,000. The area is full of shops with ethnic products and above all, good curry restaurants. There are relatively few tensions between different groups and people are used to living in a culturally diverse society here. The move to a multicultural society began in the 1950s in the UK with the arrival of West Indian people followed by people from Asia in the 1960s. More recently, there has been more movement from the east of Europe, particularly Poland, and these people have found jobs such as electricians, plumbers, or home helps. Hi, what's your name? AJ. AJ, um, have you come to Britain or were you born in Britain? I was born here in Coventry. And what do you think makes Britain a multicultural society? Um, I think London is the main hub of it. Um, just everybody wants to be in London. I think it's capital of the world, really. Everybody wants to be here. Uh, my favourite place in the world. And do you have any friends from other countries? Yeah, all over. Um, I travel a lot right. around the world as well. I have friends all over. Originally, my parents are from India as well. So tell me how your family arrived in Britain. Um, well, my mum and dad come over probably about 18, 20 years ago. Um, and they moved to a small place and then I moved out of home about five years ago. Um, but yeah, they came here for a better life, I think. Tell me about the school where you teach. It's in Eldon Castle, and we've got lots of minority groups that go there, so we don't have very many British children, mainly South American and Spanish children in our school. So we try to do as much as we can for different cultures. So do you find that, um, are the children less integrated, or are they starting to be a bit more integrated? No, but we try to cater for their cultures as much and often we get um, children who don't speak a word of English and um, so that's quite difficult for us but um, they integrate with British children, they integrate with different cultures it's, it's nice to see them together actually and it's helped me learn about lots of different cultures so it's been really good Hi, what's your name? I'm Jarell Hi Jarell, do you think uh, Britain's multicultural and what makes it so? Um, yeah, I definitely think it's multicultural um, I think, especially since the immigration from the 60s when my grandparents from Jamaica came over. So now we're all first generation black children, there's Asians, especially around Brick Lane. We've got all the curry shops and everything. So I definitely think it's multicultural. So your grandparents came over from Jamaica. Do you go to Jamaica? No, I've only been three times. So yeah, I'm more, more of a London boy. So that's about it. And do you ever eat Jamaican food? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Every Sunday, my nan cooks for me because I live with her. So, yeah. Do you have any 
it happen. If you go to any large market in the UK, you'll find a wide variety of food on offer, often from very diverse origins. Chicken tikka masala is considered a British national dish, although its origins are from far off India. There are numerous curry restaurants in and around Brick Lane alone, and an estimated 9,000 throughout the country. If you can't afford to eat out, there's always lots of international food on offer on market stalls. Apart from Chinese and Indian, you can taste South American food, such as Argentinian sausages and the typical chili curry sauce. No market would be complete without Italian food, and Parma ham is very popular in the UK. Markets are the place to go if you want to taste food from all over the world.
for giving us this chance to see a difference um, and, and to see our context from a different perspective as well. And yesterday, I did every effort to bring into the attention of people from Oxford University Press, uh, Cambridge University Press, Oxford University researchers, and also British Council people, the fact that Turkey is a unique context. It has different ways of uh, actually practicing issues, like in the EU, your examples in Greece and in Italy, it's different. And we have similar uh, materials, and we have different or similar ways of looking at materials and materials evaluation. So I told them, to cut the short, long story short, when you are evaluating, it was about higher education, okay? When you are evaluating a country's uh, English uh, uh, proficiency levels of students and teachers, you need to pay attention to its history, educational history. So I said it, I mentioned it in the morning, that in 1997, we had an educational reform, and uh, you start, some of you, maybe all of you, I don't know, um, started learning English in the fourth grade. And it came in with the 1997 uh, policy, education policy. And then in 2005, or maybe the no, 2012, I think it was 2012, because I had, I had a uh, conference proceeding in which I talked about this 4 plus 4 plus 4 education system. And I talk about uh, children learning English from second grade onwards, and we are implementing it without any preparations. And I have some suggestions there. I mean, what can you do with this kind of a situation? And and I mean, I gave the example of the publisher's wife actually invited me to go to Ankara to give the talk, and the publishers were also University supported our. Uh, they actually funded our trip, so he he had a kind of. Um, I say escort. or you're so tired or nothing came in your group. Let's face it, maybe. <laughs> Uh, we're not sure that 
was prepared or not because uh, the instruction is still a bit difficult. And uh, it was like they asked the students to do two exercises. And exposing students uh, doing two exercises for one listening in this level is difficult. They get confused. So it's better if we give them uh, one listening for one exercise, then we repeat it for the next exercise. Uh, that was a very, I think it was a very good uh, idea. Um, yeah, just in general. Also, we could add some visuals to the exercise here. There's exercise A, which animals, uh, which animals does she take care of? Penguins, echoes, elephants. In this level as well, we can add satellites to the students, like the sort of as a vocabulary, as a vocabulary exercise in uh, being inclusive in uh, the instruction, it would be also having a new value. And we could ask, like, it was, uh, he was like speaking, like reading from script. It wasn't uh, a yeah. very authentic situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We could ask questions like, what do you think about David? I think his name was David. Yeah, mm -hmm. what was like, what do you think that this person is from? What do you think his nationality is? He is this authentic. Uh, do you think all English people can speak this way, or he is like he's originally not English, but he could improve his language to speak this intelligent way? Yeah, Thank you so much. These were very positive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so were you asking for the, the second? Perspective? Yes, but he wanted to go back to the first because we didn't have time to share. That. You're right. Okay. But, you know. So, so what about the second, the second activity? Any ideas? they watch the video. That's a very good point because their understanding changes in a while. Yeah. Thank you. Any other ideas from the other groups? Yes, please. Well, you don't know about from the people. Yeah, and please also, speak to the microphone. Yes, this is going to throw the linguistic landscapes, which yeah. is a, a, a field very much explored, but can have, can be exploited in a different way. Because linguistic landscapes, I often refer to them in Rome because it's full of diverse, diverse uh, uh, populations, shops and restaurants and food. And food, don't um, uh, undervalue food. Food is what our teenagers, I mean, the TV ser series on food are very much 
uh, at the top of their list. Very popular. It's very popular. But also, what I often ask them, because it happened to me when I traveled to my working place uh, by metro, uh, I hear so many different sounds and accents and languages. I feel lost. I say, oh my God, where is this person from? So we are tuning in to a different um, oral environment. So it's very important to, to sort of focus, have them focus on the sounds, on the new sounds, how they adjust, how do they adjust to the new sounds. Going back to what they said, they mostly um, learned English through music. And so this means that they pay attention. Pay attention to music, pay attention to sounds. So I think that has a lot to do going back to listening as a Cinderella of all the skills. There is not enough to work on listening. How do you understand, for example, nobody tells you how they, they understand, how they cope with that. And go back also to the idea of reflecting upon your L1. Any other last minutes? Yes, please. Uh, the problem that I saw was uh, about the video. Yes. I didn't really uh, think about the activities because I was more concerned about the video. The first person ah, yes. had a... You are the one... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, British accent. But he was talking about having, a, having a, uh, an parents from Pakistan. Even though he was born in Britain, I think that person was not really, uh, was not really a good idea to show people uh, the way how uh, a person uh, speaks with uh, um, with having the parents from Pakistan. He sounded so British that I couldn't really um, pay attention to his background, family background. Mm -hmm. I think when we have a, when we have an image of a person who has a different uh, backgrounds, they would have an accent or something. For example, I thought about him and I thought about a colleague of mine and their accents are not really the same. She has their own accents and we see that they have like, you know, they have different mm -hmm. backgrounds. So I think he should have had more non-native sound of it just to show that, okay, there's a cultural diversity. So in a video that talks about cultural diversity, but the, <coughs> the person speaks perfectly British accent to me. Yeah, you're right, but at the same time, couldn't this be a very good example of new identities? How of course, new identities are being shaped yeah. by the context you live in. Well, I can show in his parents uh, using the language in a um, foreign context, in, in a foreign country, um, it would affect my perspective of cultural diversity more. More this than, is, you know. A very interesting point, and also in terms of videos to be shown, I mean, there are such, such videos. I think, for example, of cultural diversity in a very old film, Witness.
they offer it. It's free on their website, so it's something yes. But your colleague wanted to add something. If uh, the university is too long, sometimes students get bored. So maybe we can start and ask to uh, make them take short notes what they hear, uh, like a dictation maybe. And then we will make the, uh, we will ask them. Yes, no questions, very short questions, maybe. So maybe you will be better for them. You can crop them. You can stop there. Is also, the website do a dukanon, or write a dukanon, or write where you can stop the video, insert um, comprehension questions, mm -hmm. and then once they answer the comprehension question, or well, any kind of questions, yeah. the video can go on. Yeah. But ask them to do that. Yeah. Ask them to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Right? <coughs> I think. Thank you. 